me tell you a wonderment story. So, Les, you can chime in on this. So, on Tuesday and Wednesday, we were with Les and his wife Jane in Rochester, Minnesota with uh, Destiny Church. Then in the evening, we had a larger group where we just presented Ascended Life, and I think there were maybe 35 people there. And uh, anyway, um, we went to the activation. First one was entering in through Jesus the door, John 10, 9. And then later on, we did the two hands, right and left hand, and uh, discovery of an angel. Okay, so as I'm talking about Moving into the heavenlies, we use the Hebrews 12, 22 and 23 passage where we've come to this mountain of the Lord and there's angels and then there's saints. Well, one precious lady had a very genuine question, a question I think every one of us needs to ask, and I think we all have it answered. But I asked the same question about three years ago, and that was, well, so... If there are saints there, do we involve with them? And what about this thing called necromancy? You see, that's where it has to be all right to ask tough questions. If we don't have the capacity or openness to ask tough questions, we're not going to grow. We're going to leave that area in a closet. Anyway, I just unpacked it and this very vital, powerful verses that I think for me, just opened the door wide open and gave permission, no problem. I didn't know if it landed with her. I wasn't sure, but I knew we couldn't just stay out there in the weeds. We had to keep moving for some of the other group, the rest of the people. So we came up to the John 10:9 uh, activation. And so I said, okay, let's become like a little child, move in through Jesus the door. Well, listen to this. So she when she began to see Jesus as a door, Jesus became a fiery door, a door of fire. And he just kind of sucked her right on in. It was just kind of like he was taking charge. And he pulled her in, and she was immediately brought in the context of her family, and many of them on the other side. And they were all having a picnic, but one person in in particular was her grandfather who she'd never seen but she's seen pictures of course and she'd heard that he was an austere kind of very sober person I and that was your great grandfather wasn't it yeah and he yeah. he reached down and picked her up and brought her into her his shoulder and was so kindly to her and it just changed everything for her regarding can we integrate with the saints First of yeah, all, by the way, there was, there was thousands of saints there at the same time that she saw watching this. And when she first got there, her uh, great grandma and grandpa were jumping up and down trying to get her attention so they so she'd see them, you know. And when and when they and when she finally noticed them, they were jumping up and down and and uh, yeah, it was crazy, you know. And I think it impacted the whole room. It just the whole room said, "Holy cow!" Because this this gal Betty is. Everybody, you know, knows that she's real sincere and good, you know, and, and uh, you can see her eyes were kind of almost bugging out, you know. <laughs> so that's so yeah. good, Les. Uh, maybe you and Jeff kind of tag team here a little bit. What impacted me was just uh, the tears flowing down her face as she gave her testimony, and she said that her great grandpa just swooped her up, and he was just so loving and so kind. And she didn't even know she had permission to uh, see or talk to anybody on the other side. And so it just it just blew open that door, I think, for everybody because she was so sincere and authentic that the, her vision and her experience became everybody else's vision and experience. And so it was just powerful. The, the point there that is important to me is she asked a tough question. And then when we found right. an answer to the tough question, the Lord just blew her doors off. <laughs> it was so, I mean, the whole room was touched because most people knew her. In fact, she's the mother of the pastor. And yeah. so most people know her. And when they heard her question, and then they heard some scripture to support 
where we were headed and then saw that Jesus actually took her into it. Oh, it was just a blessing of major proportion to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Hey, Les, tell us a little bit about Jane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jane is, uh, she's um, a lot different than me. She, you know, I just kind of step in. I don't worry about it. Jane's going to check things out. You know, she's going to make sure that the Bible's there, stuff like that. And so, but she struggled a little bit, you know, over probably the last, I don't know, six months maybe of, of connecting and stuff like that. And, uh, but, uh, you know, so when it comes to angels, she, you know, she's just kind of hesitating a little bit. She, you know, and I'd tell her about angels and she might just roll her eyes a little bit saying, well, maybe, maybe, you know, but she's sitting there on her chair and she looks over and there's a bunch of angels sitting right next to her, boom, right over there, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, and she, and, and when Jane said it, everybody in the room knows Jane. I mean, she ain't gonna, you know, what Jane's, for Jane, uh, if it's, you know, if it's poop and on the plate, it's poop on the plate. I mean, it, 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 no one, she doesn't pretty things up, right? And so everybody appreciates her honesty. But anyway, she's sitting there, so that was shocked everybody. But in the morning, she got up ahead of all of us, and the Lord gave her the names of all of her angels, which was, which was insane, you know, for her, she just, I mean, you know, and so now she's got a problem, right? She has, yeah, six angels, by the way, yeah. And uh, uh, the funny thing is, my main angel, defender angel is uh, magnanimous. And her main angel is magnanimous. And, and uh, she said, well, Lord, this can't be true because how can there be you know, how can mine be magnanimous too? And she's, and the Lord said to her, well, can't you have two people with the same names, you know? And so we, you know, it, it just, it, to me, it just tied it together with us that, you know, uh, so I told Mark, I said, I don't know if I can lead this bunch much more. You know, they're all getting ahead of me, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, it's quite a, quite a deal. There was other ones. What was it, um, uh, Katie? Uh, she's a gal that has been coming to our uh, 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 ascension meetings on on uh, Wednesday mornings, and uh, she's just hungry. And, but you know, she's had a bunch of amazing experiences. Uh, um, yeah. So this Katie is uh, she's kind of go getter. She's uh, an ETR, easy to receive. In this case, easy to see, I believe. And yeah. uh, so when we did the angel activation, she says. I had a gold bar in my hand and oh, she yeah. said that it had it was emerald studded and she says at first it looked like a hilt of a sword but she says there was no sword but as soon as she said gold bar for some reason my mind just said candlestick golden candlestick and I immediately went to the ladies of the golden candlestick so she told the rest of her story of what she saw and the name of the angel was Joy. And I says, uh, Katie, I think you should read the book, The Ladies of the Golden Candlestick. There's three books in the series. She says, I'm reading that book right now. Yeah, yeah. And just last Sunday, she had been in church and somebody had prophesied a similar thing over her. So I told Les, you better watch out. Yeah. That girl's going to be the first one that's going to oh. translate, like, physically. Yes, yeah. 